you guys. <laughs> I said nothing of importance, so. I'm just uh, running behind. But thank you for hanging out while I was muted that whole time, so. That is great. All right, we got the chat, we're good, we're good. Let me just tell, um, let me tell Instagram that we are, we are live. So we're doing Kamaru Usman, um, Nigerian nightmare in UFC. Should be a pretty good stream. I got a good idea of what I want to do. I was going to do something cool with like, you know, blood and, and stuff like that, but I think I'm just going to do something a little bit more normal. Okay. Let's rock and roll. So, uh, this is going to be pretty heavily um, Boss Logic inspired. So, hold on. I can hear myself talk. Which I don't want to do. But I guess I can hear myself anyway. So, I've got these two photos. This is what we're going to set up the composition with. Here's the composition here. Now uh, we got this going on. Okay, okay, good, good, good. All right, so we've got, I'm going to have him down here. We're going to do some cool stuff in the front, and then we're going to flip this guy around, actually. And then what we're going to be able to do with that, then, is we're going to have this guy be giant. Um, let me hit enter. Let's make him, this is going to be our composition, our big and little composition. So what we got to do is not hit any of these buttons. Okay, there we go. Go like this, maybe make it a little bit larger. We'll go in and fine tune some of these details like his head's a little, his head is a little lumpy, but we're going to put that guy, we're going to focus on him later. What we're going to focus on now is this guy in the front. <clears throat> so I want this to be a, a relatively dark um, composition because we're going to do heavy, heavy lighting. And that's what Boss Logic does a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we're going to turn this guy into the, the Nigerian nightmare and then have him, I don't know, shouting in the background, doing something scary, something like that. So actually, I'll just put this in the background here and then we'll go like this. There we go. So we need somewhere for him to be sitting. So I just have these two photos of him cut out. This one in the back, tried to find a better photo, but this is what we'll have to do with. Um, and then we've got this guy down here and this is where we're gonna focus a lot of the attention. But first what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple things to this. So I have already downloaded from Footage Crate. Um, I have some like destroyed ground. That looks really nice. I just need to figure out what it is called. Ground impact full. So what this is going to allow us to have is basically a, dang, an impact on the ground. So like this. So this is an animation where it's impacting on the ground like that. So, you know, this is right at impact. We might do that. This has some extra stuff. This has some floating stuff in the front. We'll do this one. So frame 14. And this is just an animation that they have available to download, but I'm going to make it so he's essentially sitting down in this area and we'll probably darken up everything as a whole, but I can just darken this up so it matches a little bit with the background because we do have a dark background. I'll just duplicate this a couple times, uh, set this to multiply and then We'll get rid of the background, sort of like that. So this is what we're setting up. Now I could set this to multiply, I'm not gonna see it then, so it's a bad idea. So we're not gonna do that. Yeah. Um, 
I I did a poll and nobody everybody knew who this person was or 75% of people they were like yeah of course we know who this person is but I don't really pay attention to UFC if you don't pay attention to UFC then you're not going to know who this person is okay so I'm going to mask out I'm gonna see if there's some areas that we can put some feet behind I'm trying to see trying to determine where the ground is impacted Oops. mask on the curves layer on accident nope not that yeah this layer okay so i think right here there's a little area where we can put some feet behind which is nice we'll have to put some shadows on this and then we'll, i think we'll just put some shadows right here and maybe get rid of that toe kind of like that i think that's good so we'll make a little bit of a layer i'm gonna get rid of these so i can see what i'm doing Who needs toes anyway? That's right. Um, so I got these floor. I'm using the floor shadows that are really great. So we'll do this foot shadow. <clears throat> we'll just kind of, oh see, so there's a foot shadow here and we'll have this masked too. I'm gonna duplicate this, put that right in there. Uh, make a new layer. Let me look at something really quick. Okay, great. I always get edits on design work when I'm on this stream. It's the best thing ever. I think that's pretty nice for shadow there. I'll duplicate that essentially and flip it around. And I like to do that by just adjusting the width, the negative, whatever that is. Put that there, that's good. And then we need just like a general shadow so it's like kind of an elevated foot over here. Like, what does this shadow look like? It looks like that, so that's fine. So let's put that right there. I think that's pretty solid. So group these all together, shadows. Um, and I will give this the same layer mask, but not really. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that. Because it's going to look like this. So I mean, I think that's fine, actually, how it is. We've got this going on. He's in the back here. Um, I think it could use a little bit more contrast. I thought it would be fun. You guys let me know if we should do this. So I'm gonna go to liquify real quick. So in the liquify layer, they have where you can adjust their face. It's kind of like the neural filters, but not. So I can go in here and I can say, hello, I would like to give him a smile. And then it'll give him a nice big weird smile. Um, and I can hit OK. And now he has this really weird smile, like that. Like it, which would be good if we wanted to give him a creepy smile, but that's just like, it's not a good creepy smile, it's a weird creepy smile. Okay, so we need to establish our light source. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. That's where the light is coming from. So we'll just designate that the light source. We'll add some other stuff later to actually make that the light source, but I'm just designating it the light source now so we can do this. Okay, so let's figure out what we want to do. So there's a lot of stuff I know I want to do to this. So I want to make his eyes glow. So we're going to do that. So the easiest way for me theoretically to do that, I'm just going to paint over his eyes with white with a normal brush is what I have good oh I'm on the wrong layer man that would help so I'm going to paint just in his eyes like this and I'm going to go back and refine it a little bit to sort of fake the funk as one of my college professors would say so we're going to I'm gonna make it so they're a little bit sharper. Like I know where his eye is, but I wanna make it so it is a little bit more realistic. Um, or just a little more, not realistic, a little bit more cartoony actually than what it would be. Like that's okay. Uh, let's add a little bit more to this. I think that's fine. So we've got his eyes, his eyes are now, like this one looks weird, it just feels weird to me. You know? 
We're gonna go like that, and then really shape it like this. I think that looked a little bit, just looked better. Uh, let's see here. Uh, white eyes. And we'll use that as some sort of glowing source of light as well. New layer. We're gonna actually apply this to this layer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a gradient map. Sorry, we're gonna add a- Gradient map. And what this is going to allow us to do is change this to classic, because I don't want classic. But I'm just gonna turn his face white, essentially. Like that's fine. Um, and this is gonna be in a separate layer, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So we're going to invert this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on his face. So I'm gonna search, I have a sand brush. So you can search your brushes, I'm gonna search for sand. And I'm going to use this essentially as a paintbrush. So I'm going to paint back in areas of his face. Because he's done, I've seen him do this before on the internet, where he paints essentially a Nigerian flag on his face. Um, so we're going to do that. But first what we need to do is we need to apply white paint and then apply the green paint after the fact. So we have that gradient map, which is good. So then we're gonna make another one. Gradient map. And it'd be cool if we had this in the background, like reverse, but with glowing eyes, like this was creepy. And creepy is what we want. Um, so I'm gonna go here. We'll go back to Safari. Let's pull that up for you guys. And we just have the Nigerian flag. I'm just gonna screenshot this. Hit enter a couple times just so I can drop this layer in. So I just want that color. So with the gradient selected, which is what I clicked on the first time, we'll just drop that color in that doesn't exist. Color right here. So we'll drop that in. Get rid of the flag so we can see what we're doing. So I want this to just be regular green. So I don't think I need the white and I just need to drag this over. Kind of like that. And we're going to give it the same. Actually, no, we're going to give it the same mask, but then we're going to mask that again in a group. And we're going to mask out the middle part. So it's like this. So it just kind of looks like he has white face paint going up his eyes, right up his eyes where it is. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna name this group face paint, face paint, face paint. And then we're gonna mask that to just his face. So we're gonna use a regular brush, a nice hard regular brush, and we're just gonna paint around his face. And basically so it doesn't bleed off onto his neck because that's not gonna look realistic. I think this will look really cool because what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Whatever lighting effects we have, we're going to apply that. This layer is going to be underneath it, so all the lighting effects would apply to this. So it's pretty easy to see where the white should and shouldn't be based on some lightness. We'll go like that. So this is where we're at. So already kind of cool. And I can go in and we can tweak some of this stuff. So like on the gradient map, maybe we tweak some of this over a little bit. There, that looks a little bit more natural. All right, so we'll hit save. Um, oh, let's save uh, Usman graphic. Usman graphic dot PSD. Should we change his Uf UFC gloves to be green and white? That's a good question. So what we could do is we could change those to be colors, but we'll do that later. What's up, Elijah? All right, so we got face paint, we got Usman. So I'm gonna put these in the same group. Usman, Usman, whatever. All right, so now we need to do our lighting. So we're gonna do that like we would do anything. We don't really need to tweak. That's weird. We don't really need to tweak the coloring because the backgrounds, um, gray it's black so we don't need that let me get rid of that okay so we got the exposure on here um we're gonna do a curves adjustment layer for the fringe 
And what we're actually gonna do on that is we're gonna have we're gonna have him sort of emanating fire or energy. That's the idea of what we're gonna do. So, uh, Dan, it was from Footage Crate. Um, you can download ground. It's a ground impact uh, video, but you can just download the frames as ping files, and that gets you that. So that's what I did. Okay, so we've got this. So this is going to be the fringe precision fringe okay let me duplicate that we'll name this highlights let me duplicate that and name this shadows shadows of course i need to take this and move this down listen garrett if i found a good photo of cassius marsh doing that sort of roundhouse twirly kick thing i would have had i thought about doing him hitting an up or hitting a ref in the face or something like that just because that would amuse me okay so we got our fringe here like that which is good we're gonna set that to two and a half um, feather and then if the underlying layer is something like that this is really getting his knees back here it's really not doing a lot it, it is but it's not super super killing it what we're probably going to end up doing is having so many effects back here that it is going to be super light and super dark. Okay, so these are going to be the base highlights. So the base highlights, and this is going off of this top left-hand corner, is where I said, oh gosh, oh gosh, wrong hotkeys. So up here is where I said that we're gonna have our highlights. And I'm gonna set these to luminosity. Okay, so we're gonna go like this. We're gonna have you know, parts of his face we're gonna need. I'm gonna have two separate highlight and shadow layers. Um, one are going to be this, which is going to be the general highlights on here to lighten things up. And then I'm gonna have another one that is going to be more details. Probably like details on his pants and stuff like that. Um, and I do want this highlight to not affect a certain layer like that thing, that's fine. And the thing is when I'm doing this and I have the blend if selected, it's not going to hit all the areas I want. So we're just gonna graciously hit this like, so like, this is all going to be shaded super heavy, but then this down here would be get hit by light. Um, I don't know if this would be hit, you know, theoretically, you know, maybe here. We'll get underneath the foot. And then we'll just get a little fringe around here. But all in all, he's going to be pretty dark just from how this lighting is going to hit him. But we're gonna have to make sure his face is nice and lit up as well. So we'll we'll fix that along the way once we figure out the whole lighting scenario. So we got that, that's good there. Let's do the shadows. Really the shadows are the main part where they're going to affect a lot. And I'm doing this with a 50% brush. And I'm actually gonna drag the shadows down a little bit more. Because what, it, what we're doing is essentially we're we're starting off with an image that's kind of gray. That's with the exposure, it's just sort of in the middle. Um, not overexposed, not underexposed. And I think it might be a little too much. So let's do negative one. Because if we do that, it allows us to add in the highlights a little bit better. Luminosity, luminosity, great. Okay, so the shadows we can toss in here. Now, I'm gonna do 100% just inside here because this is all, none of this is hitting this light. This is all being deterred. You see, it looks kind of funky coloring wise. Let me set these back to normal. I think that looks a little bit better. So just doing our base shadows. We're gonna get under here and I'll add finer details to those later. You know, we might darken up this whole area from the original image. This area seems a little funky. So we might fix that, you know, the knee here. I'm trying to figure out what we want to do with these arms and like what is going to be hit. 
Like this looks nice in here. Like this all looks nice how we have it done. Oops, my zoom's a little too far. So we need to get the face here. This side of the face is gonna be covered. I'm gonna drop it down a little bit and try and get a little bit of detail in here on the eyes. But if we have this as a light source, we're gonna go back and fix and change all this anyway. But we just have some lighting based on that top right hand edge. So all right away, like, this is with nothing. This is with the small amount of lighting we did. And I've said before, this is uh, this is very harsh. This is very dull. Not a lot of detail with the lighting. Um, the more time we spend doing this and the more, the, the smaller the brush, the better, because that's gonna give you finer detail. So I'm gonna erase the fringe over here and actually, I'm gonna go into the photo of him himself, so which is somewhere. Right here. And I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm just gonna use a soft stamp tool. And I'm just gonna go like that. And save. And that should get rid of that sort of fringe over here, which it sort of did. What's up, Chris? Good morning to you as well. That looks better. So I've got, you know, I can see some issues with my uh, clip here because when I clip this out, there's a, a chain link fence behind him for the octagon. So it's real, real funky. There we go. So I'll just give him a little pedicure, kind of like that. And we'll go like that, and we'll just cut off some of the shorts like that, no big deal. Save. Great, save, save as. As. So we have our shadows and our highlights. I'm gonna go in now and do, I'm gonna duplicate the shadows, and we're gonna do finer shadows, or more shadows. You know, more shadows. So what this is gonna do is it's going to or duplicate what we just did but it's gonna allow us to just have darker shadows in certain areas and this has no blend if on it so it's really just gonna make things darker let me look here on this fringe so we've got a fringe down here at the bottom which I do not want and I don't want a fringe down here because I want these to be super dark because these are hitting or these are touching the floor so these should theoretically be super dark And I will have to go in and, you know, tweak the shadows so those are also dark. Uh, let me duplicate these. Let me set these to multiply. Something's just not adding up. So I need to go back and we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But I'm going to add finer tuned shadows here. So like... Uh, a little bit like this. We'll put some more on the side of his arm. And I'm doing this with a 100% brush, which is making it really aggressive. But if I paint it with like a 50% brush, it is going to look a little bit better. And we'll go ahead and we'll add in more highlights as well. And you know, this is good for if we wanna add a little bit of detail around some of these areas where his arm might be. Let me look at this highlights real quick. Do I want this to be set to luminosity or normal? Luminosity. I think we might do something a little different with the highlights, but we will get to that when we cross it. Okay, so we're adding in shadows like this. You know, theoretically, there's going to be a shadow from his head going like this. So we might add that in. And adding shadows like that that are going to, that are coming off of a part of his body. So like here, there would be a shadow here more so than up here. Adding stuff like that is really going to help sell, you know, the light source from coming up there. 
you, know, you need to make it the same angle, but you can see it really looks like this is touching right where his leg is and the shadow is not being affected by it otherwise. Okay, so that's good. Okay. This is our composition so far, pretty decent. I think he is a little too, he's not sharp enough. So I already did edits on him. I'm gonna do it again and we're gonna see how bad this looks or how good this looks. And I think he looks a little unrefined because of the lighting effects. Let me just do this. Let me hop into camera raw. General settings, but I wanna make sure none of this. Actually, what I wanna do is I wanna set this camera raw from normal to luminosity. I don't want to affect the color at all. So we're going from this to this. To this. So I mean, yeah, that's a little bit better. What happened to do? Get rid of that, add it back. Let's just add a little bit of it. I don't want him to be like crazy. Just set these to zero and ten. We'll just do that. There. Some faint, faint things. What's up, Henry? We got this going on, that's good. Let's add some, let me get rid of this light source. We'll add this back in. What I want to do is I wanna add some final edits, like a foggy night layer. And I'm just trying to figure out what, um, That looks nice. What color look up? Sorry that I want to add to this. Like I like the look of that. So like that's kind of nice. Maybe we can add in a light source from the top. Actually, let's go up here. I think I like the look of this, but I want more green. So the opposite of green is magenta. So we'll add that, go here. Everything's a little blue though, so I just wanna add some yellow to the blue, take away some magenta and add a little bit of black or take away a little bit of black. Let's do the same thing with the cyan. There, that's gonna make things everything a little bit greener. So that's good. Okay, so the lookups are good. We've got that. We've got our light source from the top here. So with the highlights, I'm actually going to take the highlights and I'm going to duplicate it on the exposure so the exposure isn't hitting that. And I think that looks better because he's actually showing through then. And I think just on the highlights, I think I just need to bump out the what the the what if, the blend if a little bit like that. So I think that looks better. Okay, so let's take our fringe layer. Let's make a layer of white. Link it to that. Take our fringe layer. Do one of these. And then set that to like three and a half fringe. Ah, what happens if we set that to luminosity? Nothing because it's that. Let's do like six and a half. If I do that and put it underneath the shadows, what if I put it underneath the fringe? See, it looks kind of wonky right now because we don't have any light behind it. So I think that's what I want to do. And actually, let's do this. That doesn't look too bad. This is a little bright, we'll do that. I think that's a little bit okay. I need to add some highlights in here a little bit. We'll do that from the exposure. And there would be a little bit of light coming in here then. So we are going to, that's the fringe. Sort of allocate for that. That's kind of nice for now. Okay, we'll come back to him in a little bit. We got this guy in the background now. Um, let's, let's fix this guy's head because his head is just 
a mess. Oh, I can't even do it here. I gotta do it in here. Oh yeah, look at that. That's express. So let's just take a nice, nice smooth hard brush. And I don't know why this photo is huge because I upscaled it. So when you do that, it takes like six years to fill in on um, when you do the the good old quick select. It takes like six years to do. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna basically blow his head back out a little bit. Oops, let's not zoom in on my whole computer. Let's just zoom in in Photoshop. So basically we're gonna fill in this part. I'm just gonna fill this back in with a nice round brush. Of course we can't do that if we cut off the top. That's gonna be nice and flat, which we do not want. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that part of his head, to be honest, too. Updating smart objects. I'll toss it over here so you guys can see. Pop a drink. Being a Jets fan is way worse than being a Giants fan. The Giants actually have Super Bowl wins. When's the last time the Jets did anything? Wow, this is taking six years. Okay, there, now his, his head is back. So let's add a gradient map to him. See, like it doesn't look as nice with that. Let's do this first. Let's go in, let's paint his eyeballs white. Like that looks terrible, but we can fix it in post. Let's do that. Bears legend Mark Sanchez. I think is what you mean. Just got a nice white eye here. We'll probably make this glow just because who doesn't love a nice glowing eye? You know. I was gonna copy just the color lookups from my Pal Gasol graphic I did, my 365. I made his eyes glow super nice but I don't think I'm gonna do that man I need to just paint in white I really should have just filled this layer in let's go like this see for me when I'm doing something with eyeballs there's this there's just this time and there's just this feeling where I go, that doesn't look right. You know, that looks odd. How can I fix it? Like that looks, like that just looks weird. That's where his eyeball is though. So let me duplicate that. Let me convert this to a smart object. Let me blur it 15 pixels and duplicate it again and then uh, Gaussian blur at 25 pixels, sort of like that. And then we put, yeah, look at that. Just look at all that, look at how jagged that is. Just, that's just, it's just gross. So something like this, maybe. Maybe we make this that same green, something like that, I don't know. Maybe we'll come back to him. Oh, if I make if the, yeah, if I if I want his eyes to glow or just be white is a difference. I guess I should think about that. Oh, what is this? Oh, is it just not showing me the layer mask? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, I wanted to go into the exposure and I wanted to mask out parts of this because I want this white to shine through. and basically act as a highlight. I'm using a normal brush and this is actually doing things. I just can't tell that it's actually doing things. <laughs> and one thing I probably wanna do, and I'm gonna try this. Ooh, 
What is happening? I'm just so confused right now. Oh, it's set to, no, that shouldn't matter. Okay. Oh, okay, that's what's happening. I just want this like white line right along his face here, like that. So there's like a glow right here across his face. This is all I'm trying to do. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just like, okay, let's just blur it, you know. I guess we can turn it into a smart object. I finally keyed smart object to my keyboard. Uh, Gaussian blur. I don't know, blur it like five. Yeah, that's fine. And then basically we'll mask this to his face. But nothing is working. Man, this just hates me right now. There we go. This is hopefully gonna give it a little bit of a fringe on his face to make it a little bit realistic. That his face is lit up a little bit more than everything else. What is that? That is his eyeball. We don't need that on. Okay, let's make these eyes glow up here just because. Where are them eyes? Okay, white eyes, duplicate, Gaussian blur, five, Gaussian blur again. Do like 10. I'm just gonna get a white brush with a very small hardness to it. 20 like that. Make them glow. Great. Um, then I can go into the exposure here. Do the same thing. Get rid of the exposure um, on the shadows. Get rid of the shadows on the highlights. Get rid of the highlight, or add the highlights. The more shadows, get rid of the shadows. So nothing should really be affecting the eye area. Add to this area. Take away from this area. Take away from this area. Okay. We're gonna use a soft brush around the back here where I put these shadows in. I can't even tell that this is doing anything at all. Like, it is. It's just so hard to tell what it's doing because it's so faint. Okay, so we got this. So that's a good, it's a good start for how we have him. So we're gonna save this. Um, let's go. Let's find some back, back stuff. So here's footage crate. So this is what I like to use. So I have a bunch of stuff in here. What's up, Chi Town Graphics? So I don't want sound effects. I don't really want graphics. I want motion effects, but I want like sort of dust to smoke. I kind of want some like vapor sci-fi stuff. It would be actually kind of spooky things. Uh, dusted smoke, no, I want like flames. But I don't want flames, sorry, I'm gonna preview not pro content. So this is everything you can download and you can use all this stuff. I just want like energy. Okay, that's not what I want. Um, magic. I've downloaded a bunch of magic stuff from here before. I just want to see what we have under magic powers, but we don't want the pro stuff. We just want this stuff, which we can use. There's a lot of really cool stuff on here. It's kind of hard to state what I want. You know, kind of this green stuff, but I want it to be in the back. Let me do this. Pull up. Like an example of what I'm talking about um, that I want to do. 
is a good example. So like Boss Logic made this, which is amazing. So he has like, I guess it's just smoke. So I think I just really want to find some cool looking smoke. That I can bend around him. What's up, Bradley? So let's find some smoke that we can use. So this is all smoke that we can use. There's dust hits, there's shock waves. This is the back of a shock wave. So like this would be good. So let me log into this actually. Log in. Hit buttons that work for me to log in. Oh, can't do that. I want like smoke vapor is what I want. You know, I want cool wispy smoke like this. And then smoke. Okay, so like what is this? Like this is nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download a ping zip ping sequence file. And what that's gonna allow me to do is it's gonna give me each frame of that sequence. So now I can take one of these frames like this and toss it behind him. Oh gosh, that is super blown out. Is that from these? Is that just what that looks like? No, something's blowing this up. Yeah, there we go. Hold on, this is part of that. So I need to do that. Yeah, that looks better. So we're gonna give this a radiant man. We're gonna use the same Nigerian flag that we used before. Nigerian flag. Find this, go back to gradient map. Click the green on there, which is fine. Move it over a little bit. Actually only apply it to this. Set this to screen. And then Convert this to a smart object, set it to screen, but then puppet warp it. So puppet warping it is going to allow us to bend it around his back like this. And bend this down like this. And move the smoke up like that. Maybe we move bust some of the smoke out like this. You know, something like that. I think that's fine. Um, I want wispy smoke, which I have some of already. I think he used, I think Boss Logic used some nice wispy smoke in his, so I'm gonna duplicate. I'm gonna try and duplicate the same effect. Now he's like crazy another world good, so it's not gonna look quite the same. We'll put this on top. this let's just get rid of this white let's do that what's up a a1 or however you would like to pronounce that whatever the correct pronunciation is of that we got some smoke like that you know i might duplicate this just to make it show up a little bit better group it together something like that and then mask out part of this. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up going up to, what is this group? That's just it's top smoke. Okay. We're going to add a layer on top of this with this green. And we're going to hit the edges with that green. And I'm doing it very haphazardly right now because we'll just paint it off. So we're gonna set that to overlay, we're gonna duplicate it, set it to screen, overlay, and duplicate that and set it to color. And I found that works pretty well if you set them all to like 50%. It looks like that. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. Which one can I see the most? Color? Okay. We'll go like this. 
Clip Central, it's not a big deal. You made a sports card inspired by my Devontae Adams design. If you want to tag me, you can tag me, and I might post it saying, hey, look what this guy did, what this person did. I'm not going to get mad or anything if you don't. Oh, see, I'm doing this under more shadows. Like, why are we doing that? Come on, Brad. I clicked an awful lot, too. I need to wait until this gets rid of this mask. I can just go to history. Hold on. Brush tool. All right, well, I broke a shadow somewhere, but we'll figure it out. I do not want to see that. Do every single one of these. Okay, let's apply that to all of these and go like that. Okay, so now we're doing that, so that's good. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna gradually grow out the light coming from his back. So, you know, I might add another layer up here. That's just white and go like this. Or actually I might just make it that green again. Except that green is gone now. Garrett will get mad <laughs> if you don't tag me. But what Garrett says doesn't go and no one cares, so. You do you. Uh, let's hit that to screen. So that's good. Oh gosh, what's going on? Okay. This whole layer is set to screen, so really, I hate how this looks. We'll just hit some of these areas. color and the green and the screen. Yeah, that looks better. It's getting there. It's a work in progress. Aren't we all works in progress? <laughs> now, I said a while ago that like if if you make something and um, I inspired you, great. I'm not going to get mad if you try and copy something I make and don't give me inspiration or don't credit me. I mean, you're trying to, you're trying to learn. I'm trying to learn. I mean, I said early on, this is inspired by boss logic and I don't think it's to the, his level of quality, but I'm still trying. So I think this face is a bugging me a little bit. It's just it's like a little crispy. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do. I don't know how I want it to look. We'll do that. Okay, so there's a couple things bugging me, and it's this clip out of him. Like there's some spots where there's some clear issues with the clip. And if there's issues with the clipping, you're going to be able to tell once you start adding effects because it's not going to look good. Like this right here is like this clipping spot I need to get rid of. So that's why you want to make sure when you're clipping something that it looks that you get everything around it. Or you make sure it's a nice clean cutout. Because if there's an area and the pixels don't match up, you're going to be able to tell. Or someone with a trained eye is going to be able to tell. So like I'm just going around and fixing a couple areas that I think I can just get rid of. Because they're not bringing anything to the design. They're not helping at all. So it just makes me feel better about this as a whole, doing that. Great. Okay. Let's add, let's add an actual light source to this. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, do do do, skip it about. What are we looking for? We're looking for light sources. Okay, so. Stock images, I have lighting. I'm actually gonna do sort of this default photo I have, which is this. So this would actually be nice straight up and down on here. 
you know, kind of like that. So we already have this light source from the side, so we'll just we'll just tilt it a little bit, kind of like that. And maybe we stretch it out like this. And then basically, what we're going to do is we're going to add a nice little gradient map on top. Gradient of this. map. And basically, just pull the white out so it's not only showing the outer edges of that kind of like this so now we now we have a more defined light source light path sort of like this and it works with this background we have or not the background it works with the bottom bottom part Here we go, we'll go like that. And one, I have uh, I have a lot of stingers that I like to use. So anytime we use quick select. Quick select. Displacement map. Displacement map. Curves. And when I save. Save and. I go like that. It's all fun. We like to have fun on the stream. <laughs> That's really what it is. Really, they're ridiculous, and I love them. Okay, so like this looks really cool. This is starting to starting to really feel, get a feel for what we've got going on here. So that's good. I think what we need to do, um, I'm going to take this puppet warp. I'm going to duplicate this, and we're going to toss this on top like this I'm basically gonna hit I want to see if this looks bad I don't know how boss logic does this I'm just gonna mask this back in gradually like this so what this is gonna help do is it's gonna help the smoke look like it's flowing around his body and not just in front or behind. The issue is I don't want it to seem like I just duplicated the layer, you know. So we'll go like that. Get rid of that. The smoke on top kind of looks stupid, so we'll we'll figure that out later. Hold on, let me actually just mask out more of it like that it's like that's nice you know maybe we have some coming off his leg there so let me find this let me take this layer you know i'll just you know drag this uh copy this gradient map paste it on top of this frame group these together kind of go like this set this to screen that looks great I'm gonna duplicate this I'm gonna hide this layer duplicate it but put it behind Uzman, which is right there I want to put that right here we'll turn that on and we'll mask out the parts we don't want big full brush just mask out that area we can go back up to this one and we can do the same thing so we'll mask out areas we don't want pretty much just don't want it like that you know that's that's fine there mask that out a little bit but i think the background one is a little funky so this is why you label but this is why you label things so you don't get lost and have to know that this is what that layer is so we'll go like that. I think that looks better. And then we can just mask out more of this one like that. And then we're going to need to take our green we have up here and we're going to have to hit over here as well. And usually I just copy the same layer and paste it, but this will do for now. Oops. 
I'm using a very, sorry, I'm using a, a brush at 100% opacity, which I don't want to do. I want to use like 20%. Then we're going to hit in here. We're going to hit in here. And we're going to hit in here. That looks kind of nice. Uh, let's do the same thing. If you want to use a different frame, let's use a, it's all the same. Okay, let's duplicate this guy at the bottom. This guy here, flip it around. I just do whip, width to negative 100. And we'll put the another smoke who's a what's it over here. Kind of like that. Duplicate it. Toss this bad boy, oops. Toss this bad boy up here. Like that, set to screen. We'll mask this one out. A little bit more aggressively because we don't need it in any of these areas do kind of like that but then we need to go back and we need to go to our green layer with a 20% brush and just kind of aggressively click in this area smoke great what can we add to this I'm gonna try my hardest to add a puddle to this just because I want to we might just have his name up here because I don't know if I have an idea for what I actually want to do with him back here. You know, because we've got all this stuff going on. Maybe we just have his name crazy or something like that. Um, I want to try something. Oh yeah, I'm going to add, I'm going to add a bunch of stuff in the front to add some depth. I just have not gotten to that point yet. We're going to go to our best friend in Go to Envato Elements. You already know what I'm looking for here. If you've been on the stream for the past, if you've talked to me in the past couple of weeks, we got some puddles. We're gonna add a puddle of blood in the front. We're gonna try and add a puddle of blood. This is what this is the whole thing I wanted to do. Is I just wanted to add a puddle of blood to this somehow. I'm gonna try and match up the angle. We're gonna download this, and then we're gonna take this take this puddle let me find it come on there it is drag the puddle over here there's the puddle we're gonna get rid of the puddle we're gonna get rid of the background we're gonna go to the select area part we're gonna select a part of this 3d thing so we're gonna select the part that is pretty much everything i'm just gonna use the same red color and we're gonna fill it with blood so we want this to look right. So we're gonna mask it to this and we're gonna set it to overlay, but we're also going to put one below it and set it to multiply. And we're gonna duplicate this and set this to color. So now when we go back, there should theoretically be a puddle of blood. So and one, um, yeah, I use Envato all the time. Um, I think it's worth it. You, know, you can do a monthly thing with them. You know, it's, uh, there's a link in the description of this video. You can take a look at that. But if you, if you want, you can, sorry, I need to get rid of this. You can do it monthly. So maybe you buy a month and see what you like. Um, for the 3D assets alone, I think it's worth it just because the 3D assets are ridiculous like this puddle here that we have going on. So what do we want to do with this puddle now? So I want to take, I want to take this whole thing here, group this together. Who's on? Duplicate this, convert it to a smart object. Like Garrett said, it's worth it. Like for me, it's, it's, it's not really biased or hard for me to say, but like I can expense it, you know, as a graphic designer, I can just expense it to my business. You know, not everybody can just expense it to a business account or something like that. So there you go, we got like a nice little puddle with his eyes glowing in there. Maybe we set it to overlay and screen. You'll know, figure out how we get this to look extra spooky. Now the blood itself is super uh, 
uh, super light, so we need to fix that. So let's duplicate this and make it like 50% like normal. So the thing is, this is um, transparent, but when we get back here, it's not transparent. And I don't think these would actually, I think it would be more like that. I think that's fine. Isle of Blood. All right, uh, let's just do a quick little curves. And we're just gonna darken this puddle. I think the issue is there's actually a the shadow we need, but there's like this lighter depth, it, there's this lighter area. I think we can just go like, let me get rid of this and just do that. Cause this is actually all I need to do. We save that, save. Okay, normal. Oh, okay. What, we, what did I do here? Did I duplicate this layer somehow? Man, I had a... Okay. Just confused the heck out of myself there. Okay, so we have this puddle. I need to get rid of this layer mask. Select this layer mask and put it here. So now he's looking into this puddle, and then this puddle we need to group this together. I'm going to give it its own bevel and emboss that I'm putting in myself. The light source is from like 130, like that. But do we want it to be reversed? That's the question. There, puddle of blood. It doesn't really look like a puddle of blood, but it's, it's a puddle of blood. You and I know it's a puddle of blood. I think that's what I need to do. I think I need to duplicate this, set it to color, or multiply color, or overlay. You know, there's a bunch of different buttons we can hit. And I think I need the lighter areas to shine through a little bit more. You know, I'm just I'm just guessing at like theory on how this should theoretically be done. So he's looking through a puddle. Now with the puddle, the, here's the question. If you're looking into a puddle, is the puddle gonna be more a red reflection? Is it gonna be a screen reflection? You know, what is it gonna actually look like? You know, color dodge, like a really creepy color dodge. Would it be screened at 100%, but then anything on that layer that's kind of darker isn't going to shine through, kind of like that? And then maybe we add a layer on top of that that is red, but it's set to like... It's a, it's a color layer. Shoot, come on. Color. Color layer set to like... You know, 30% like that. Like, that's cool. And creepy. And we added a puddle, so, you know, that's a win. Alright, let me group these together. Puddle. Shoot. Actually group this together. Puddle. Save. So what I need to do, actually, is I need to go in. I need to take a look at this. Come on. Whole scene. And I need to see where this puddle would actually theoretically hit. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint around some of these areas. Actually, what I'm going to do is if the underlying layer is like that, don't touch it and then delete layer mask. Did not do what I wanted it to do. There we go. Very weird. See, I wanted to go around that area is really what I wanted to happen. Why is someone at our door? Ah. My wife ordered food for the 14th time because 
they kept getting her order wrong. All right, so we got shadow here. We got some blood. How can we put blood drip? Do we have blood dripping down from somewhere? Do we want him to be his fist covered in blood or something like that, you know? How can we do that easily? We can just do like some red splatter on him, maybe? Do I have a splatter brush? Splatter. Splat. Man. Splat. Splat. Okay, I don't. Drip. Drip. Here we go. Drip, drip brushes. Spray. Here we go. We'll just use one of these. We'll just go like this. These are giant, though. Come on. There we go. Now I can see it. Just go like this. Just like attach to him like that. There, set it to multiply. That actually looks kind of nice. That looks nicer than I thought it would, to be honest. I thought it would look kind of hokey, and it kind of does look hokey, but it actually looks kind of nice. Let's put some blood down here on his feet because he's been in the puddle. You know? Yeah, he's walking in a puddle here. That's nice. Okay, let's get rid of this top thing, because I think it honestly just makes it look like Boss Logic made it. And I don't want that. I want it to make it look like I made it, but was inspired by him. Okay, let's put some let's put some stuff in the front now. I'm open bridge back up, because I like bridge. Actually, let's go in here. I'm gonna duplicate this and set it to screen. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna basically invert it to be like this, but we're gonna take white and we're gonna make it like dark gray, kind of like that. So now we've got our light source more defined. Okay, let's find some front stuff. So we need a lens dirt because this is a gritty, gritty scene, so got a bunch of lens darts here. Let's use this one. We're going to put it in front of the lighting because this would be on the screen technically. And what I think we can do is we can create a create some contrast with the foreground and background coloring. Or we can just make this white. Everything is going to be green because of the color lookups. So if I actually want this to be red, which I kind of want it to be red, I have to do it here. I have to do it on top of the color lookups or else it's not going to show up. But I don't really know if I want to do that. And I can drop it here. It looks kind of okay. Everything is green though. So like, let me get rid of the lens dirt and let me just set it to like, I'll set that one to that. Okay. Let me find some footage crate stuff because footage crate has a lot of good realistic stuff. I just need to figure out where I put all of them. Um, assets, footage crate. Okay, so here's a bunch of stuff. So like here's an impact explosion small. So like this would be good to have You know, in the front. Hold on, let me do it by name. So this is this big giant explosion. So like maybe something like one of these la ladder frames to go like this, and just kind of blow it up like this. You know, have it behind the lighting. Maybe we darken it up a little bit with a bit of an exposure. Spell it like that. Something like that. I want some, you know, swirly cool stuff coming from the top. Oh, I need to set these to column list. Nope. Okay. So dirt hitting the screen. This is actually real nice. You can just kind of toss this wherever I want. 
you know, kind of like this. If I said it's a screen, you can kind of see it a little bit better. Kind of like that. Let me set this to normal. There. What else do we have? Dust on lens. Are these lensters? Oh no, these are, this is actual dust on lens. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to add to this? There's a bunch of stuff I've downloaded from here that's really cool. So this is front ground impact. So this is the same thing I have, except it's just the front, I believe. Oh, this is full. So I have the back. I don't think I have the front. But this is showing just the back of it. Which isn't showing a lot right now because all the action's up here. So this is where I could find debris. So let's see if we can go to footage crate. And let's see if we can do impact front. See if they have that available. Ground impact front. So this is what I want. Because I want all this stuff to be in front of him. So I have to log in again. Because that's how this works. This account logs you out every single time you try and do anything. Which is not fun. So I want the impact front. So I want the ping sequence of that. So we have our ping sequence. And maybe I group all of this together. There you go. Sorry, I had an exposure layer on there that messed everything up. Okay, so what ground impact am I using? So I'm using layer 14. So theoretically, I should be able to go here and go to frame 14 and toss this in the exact same spot. I can't really tell, you know, which is an issue. Now let me toss this up here. Hide this, hide this, hide this. Okay, here's frame 14, here's this frame. So the question is, does this add, this lines up right about here, kind of? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Actually, what I want to do is I want to find a frame that has some, um, like, dirt and stuff flying up. See, but it's just like that. So, like, that's not, that's not anything at all anyway. We'll turn these guys back on. Save. Make sure we're in the same spot still. Everything's looking cool. Okay. Let's put some text in the background, actually, because we've done a lot here. Um, I do want some more stuff in the front, though. So let's, let's take a look at that real quick. I don't know if I have like any sort of swirling things in the front, though, to add. This is a shockwave, but that's not anything fun. I might just have to add some. I think that's cool. I think I'm just gonna add some fog. It's like a, like a default thing that's like nice to add. It just gives some depth, depth and fog. I want a fog that has a lot of a lot of character to it, though. You know. Really charactery fog. Something that sticks with you. Something like this. Fog in the front. And then let's actually filter this and let's just give this a motion blur. Because we can. Like a hundred pixels. Let's add some noise to it. Set a 10% noise, motion blur, add something to it. So now we've got some stuff wisping around like that, which is nice. So then let's take a curves, not a curves layer. Let's take a levels layer. And let's just blow this out like that. So we have some fog going like that. You know, do we want it to look like that though? Probably not. What does this look like now? What's just that? Ah, see, see the problem is, the problem is, is we're covering up covering up our puddle. Oh, it's because it's the behind the puddle? That doesn't make any sense. We want this to be in like super front. Yeah, like that.
So that's good. Okay. Let's put some text in the back now. Just some nice, easy text. So he's the Nigerian Nightmare. We'll type in Nigerian real big. Do you guys have a font that you think would look good? That would look good here. I'm going to go to Envato again because they have fonts that you can use there. Uh, fonts. I want a, I don't know, a danger font. Perfect. Look at all these cool fonts. Look, real scary font. Let's use that just because we can. And that's kind of going to look nice, actually. So we got this typeface. I probably want it slanted, but we'll just install both. Install, install. Back here. What is this font called? Another? Oh yeah, slanted for sure. And since we have all these lighting effects, it's going to be applied to this as well. Nightmare. Nightmare. Let's get rid of Nigerian right now. Let's just do Nightmare. So we've got Night. We'll put Mare here. You should still be able to read it and get the gist. Let's actually kind of like cozy it up like that. A little bit smaller. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we just do Nightmare. Like this. Get rid of Mare. Go up here, type in Nigerian again. Really have these bleeding into each other. I usually don't like using fonts that are like clearly the same. You know, these are the same. But for this, it's gonna work fine for our needs. And we'll type in the. The is not really that important though, so we'll make that like smaller. Whoops. I made it like crazy small, but I actually don't hate how crazy small it is. We'll just put the right here. So then this can be moved over a little bit. The can just be right, right to there. That's fine. We've got the Nigerian Nightmare, that's great. Okay, so this is UFC, right? So they um, they fight in an octagon, right? And the, the octagon is a fenced-in area. So we're going to do that. Let me see something. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try something and see if I can get this to work. Where's this? Where's the normal layer? So I'm gonna going to make a new smart object via copy, and this is just the general. Oh, hold on, I need this to be. I need this to be below this. That affects that. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo pretty much all the editing I did to this photo, like this. Delete layer mask image, reveal all, save, go back. Okay, that's why, and that's the issue. Toss this back up into a normal spot, delete any layer mask on it, save, go back, go here, image reveal all. Basically, the, doing it this way is just going to allow me to theoretically have it in the same spot, or it's going to be the same size, so I don't have to resize it if I just put it back in. See, so now I have the Nigerian Nightmare here. I think this is going to look nice. This chain link in the background. So I'm going to keep it in there. I just got to line this up correctly. So I'm going to set it to like 
So that looks bad, so we can't see that. Okay, so let me find... Come on. I know I've downloaded a fence before. So here's a barbed wire fence. So we're just gonna toss this in the background. Like this. We're gonna do that. That looks kind of nice. Having it in the background like that. We're gonna darken it up just a little bit though. Uh, we'll do that with an exposure layer, actually, not a curves layer. Do that with exposure. Just do like, I don't know, negative one and a half. Darken that up, which is good. We'll duplicate that, toss it up top, behind the lens dirt, in front of the fog. And then we're going to make this like 400% Combine together, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I think I'm gonna set it to 10 and I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, what do you think I need to do on these words? What I was going to do I was gonna put like a brick wall behind. it just trying to find a nice brick wall oh font I'm looking under fonts for brick wall it's not gonna work okay I want to search everything for brick wall Wow, this is like super, super laggy. Love it. So you know I have too much stuff open on my computer. See, I want like a brick wall like this, but I think I want it to be even further out. Wow. This is like crazy laggy. There we go. Yeah, I want something like this. If I can click. Wow. It's like really mad at all this stuff I have open right now. Weathered. Weathered stained brick. Download without license. Great. Sounds good. Okay, the front fence is right here. Front fence? Front fence. Let's hide that right now so we can see things a little bit better. So... The barbed wire fence should technically go in front of that, but I don't want that because that actually looks better. So we're going to take this, and we're going to toss it in the back right there. Like this, right where the fence is. We're going to use the same exposure on this. Like that. We're gonna line it up with the bottom of this fence, which you can barely see. Or I'm gonna fix that by just grabbing a layer of dark and just covering it like that. So that's good. So the Nigerian Nightmare is actually going to go behind the barbed wire fence. I'm gonna group it together and it's actually going to be on the brick wall. Like that. Much better. Instantly, instantly much better. I'll do this instead. I think this is a good compromise. It did look basic, I do agree. And I still can fix part of it. Go like this. Let's do some stuff that I like to do. I'll see if I can do this in like six minutes. Okay, um, group together. Go in here. Adjustments. Threshold. 
group this all together, filter, Gaussian blur it, three pixels, duplicate it, set it to dissolve. Which one's dissolve? Save, go back to the original thing we're on right here. The dissolve looks terrible, that's fine. We're gonna take this, duplicate it, toss it to the top. Make a new layer, I'm just gonna make it black. We're gonna take these, we're gonna group these together. We're gonna convert this to a smart object. We're gonna convert this to a smart object. Then we can go in here, we can add a gradient map to this to make it black and white. Not green, black and white, like that. And then we're going to give it a lot more contrast, like this. Let's give it more white contrast like that. That's good. Let's just do one of these, filter, Gaussian blur. That's fine. We're going to save this as displacement.psd. We're going to turn this into a Photoshop document. Save it. Go back here our main thing we're gonna get rid of that we don't need that anymore that's fine we're gonna take this text so we're gonna go to filter distort displace we're gonna displace it five and five we're gonna select our displacement and that'll jumble up our text so it actually looks like it's on there even more we're gonna get rid of the displacement here save go back go back So the Nigerian nightmare, which is fine, but I think I just need to set the exposure to everything behind that, like that. And also on the barbed wire extra by itself. And I think I want the barbed wire to completely touch the top like that. There, I think that's what we want. I think overall, pretty solid, pretty solid stream. Um, Let me add a couple more things to the front and then I think we'll be pretty much good to go. This is a fun little, fun little stream. Uh, let me just add another lens dirt because I like lens dirt. I just add a lot of depth to things. Oh, hold on. No, we just need to add the front fence back like that and just blur it a little bit more. like that so we're looking through a fence so that's kind of cool and then let's add this we're gonna combine everything together camera raw some final tweaks let's do 15 negative 10 ooh, uh, negative 5 5 5 negative 5 10, 15 15 5 Vibrance 5, Saturation 10, Enter, Enter, Enter. I want to sharpen this up a little bit. Add some sharpening effects. We'll add a teeny bit of grain and we'll vignette it around the back sides like that. Great. Save. There we go. 830 on the dot. Nailed it. So thank you guys for joining me. This was a lovely stream. I was able to have a pool of blood, which is the only thing I wanted to do for some reason. Uh, but thank you guys for joining me. I do content like this every Tuesday at 7 o'clock from 7 to 8.30. Um, I have a new Discord if you guys want to join my Discord. Let me link you guys to my Discord. It's actually in the description below, so take a look at that. Um, I do weekly critiques for members of my discord those videos come out friday saturday ish something like that but thank you for uh being quick to select your time to spend with me this tuesday afternoon evening morning depending on where you are from um but all in all this was a great stream a lot of content a lot of cool things we did if you're interested in using Vado, check out the link in the description below as well um, you can learn about Envato and what you can do there. Um, I could have added some more glow because it is Boss Logic inspired. Here, let me just duplicate this and set it to screen. Blur, 
Gaussian blur it like five. I'll invert it. Yeah, I could have it. I could have added a little bit more glows because it is boss logic inspired. There, it's a little bit uh, little little bit better. There, we'll do that. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I will see you guys next week. Uh, until then, you guys have a lovely.